Hey, Gemini. How y'all doing? Welcome. We are going to be taking a look at your month of April, spring equinox towards Beltane time frame here. So in your meditation, it was short and sweet. I saw the image of a rooster. Um, now, when we think of roosters, uh, I believe it's called crowing. I think roosters, roosters crow. Um, we think about that to herald the, the dawn, the morning, right? But in this meditation, I saw this rooster begin there, but then move into the night. And I saw the words uh, lunar year and got this sense of it, it was like a transition point uh, between the nighttime and the coming dawn. But that the rooster was no less ready. It was, it was almost like a, a sense of waiting backstage for something. Um, you know, rooster animal energy is, is quite lovely. It's not one that I feel like we talk about too much. I don't think I've ever seen a rooster in an animal deck, for example. Uh, um, but rooster energy is very much about... Um, you know, allowing others to walk their own paths and take their own time and not feeling the need to control anyone or requiring anyone to conform. It's very much about meeting people where they're at. So in that way, you know, rooster energy is is really advanced karma. Um, it's really an aspect of ourselves that we become in touch with when we really release uh, the aspects of our ego that seek to control um, and are connected to our fear. Because when we are living in a place of love and trust and appreciation of everyone having a different path, then we no longer feel the need to, you know, bring anyone over to our side to explain ourselves, to try to control situations. So it's it's a really beautiful um, sort of like an ascended master energy, uh, we could say. So that energy with the lunar as well in the moon cycle, you know, we are in eclipse season, y'all. Uh, it's also Mercury retrograde. So this is a time when the collective is going to be invited to really take some inventory and look within ourselves about what are our belief systems, right? How do our actions and or our thoughts act in service or disservice to ourselves and those around us, those around us that are affected by how our mind works. Now, as a Gemini, right, you understand the realm of the mind. You have very active mind palaces, <laughs> very well-constructed mind palaces. But, you know, there's really something around this time that we're in where this, the planets are spinning backwards during Mercury and retrograde and this eclipse season where things that have been in the dark are coming into the light right? Where we're very much being invited to really choose to consciously, consciously interact with the parts of us that might be uncomfortable to look at or might have been living in our peripheral view and bringing them into the forefront or the center stage of our consciousness. Now, all of the collective is going to be invited to do this. It's, it's up to you whether you choose to consciously uh, dance with this energy, as it were, and look at it as an opportunity, right, to to learn things, to make some changes so that you can work with the energy as it is and come out, you know, victorious, uh, more well-informed, healthier, uh, you know, with a nice, clean mind palace, as it were. This is the equivalent of going into our storage unit mentally and emotionally and, and really choosing to look through and finally get rid of or integrate into our everyday lives what is really within our shadows, what is within our deepest selves. So, Jim and I feel like you have a beautiful opportunity around that, uh, where you, being the air signs that you are, have the opportunity to do this with objectivity and not get swallowed up in the emotional tide that some of the other signs, you know, may struggle with around this energy. So the animal energy for you coming through is stingray. Beautiful, because this is also about some shadow energy here. It is water, but stingray is similar to the strength key. So strength is really about choosing love over fear. And it's, it's, it's similar. It's very similar to rooster energy where it's about knowing and trusting that when we make choices that come from love and trust and faith, we're not going to go wrong. It's only when we are ruled by our fear, and especially when it's subconsciously affecting our choices, that we can fall prey to, you know, going down a path where towers await us, right? <laughs> where some, you know, the towers may fall because we've we've made some wrong turns that, uh, you know, have been fueled or inspired by our fear, fear-based choices. 
So the fact that we have this spine here and it's, it's you know, the chakra system here with all the colors here really to me speaks of alignment and it's really beautifully reflected here with the stingray because it speaks of going into the shadows in order to retrieve our alignment and come out of it more psychically connected, more emotionally grounded, but also with a healthy dose of that objectivity that air signs, you know, have wonderful access to um, and be able to integrate all aspects of you. Right. Because remember, it's it's like Carl Jung said, I'm going to butcher the quote here, but it's only what we don't know. It's only what lies in us in our subconscious that has the power to control us. Right. And if we're not aware of it, then we're going to call it fate. Right. When really we're in full autonomy uh, most of the time. So that's coming up for you here. Now, you which I love. Oh, this was another part of your meditation. I saw the uh, image also. Um, of a caterpillar. It was like a quick flash of a caterpillar that turned into a butterfly as well, which is about metamorphosis and timing and allowing for the natural cycles of things, right? So we have the Ace of Wands here. You're coming through as the Ace of Wands, which is really, 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 really beautiful. So this is about having a burst of energy. It's about feeling inspired. For those of us in the Northern Hemisphere, this is like the key that represents spring, honey. So this is wonderful that this is how you're coming in. It does show that you are in alignment with the season. But remember, the wands rule the realm of our soul, right? So it also connects us to the work that we do that is or is not in alignment with our soul's purpose. So you might be thinking, you know, <laughs> around this time, really thinking about, you know, because you know that saying, like, if you truly love what you do, then you'll never work a day in your life. I feel like that's really coming up for you around this. That is Ace of Wands energy. Because when we truly love what we do, we have all the energy that we need with which to do it. It's funny how that happens, right? When we do work that exhausts us, it's because we're not really feeling it or we're not going about it in a way that is coming from a love-based place. It's We're being driven by something else, financial means, you know, reputation, uh, you know, whatever, ego, whatever it is. So I feel like there's a certain, I'm, I'm feeling around this, like a certain call around your energy during this time where you're going to be able to observe what gives you energy and, and what depletes you. I feel like there's going to be a lot of priceless information in that. But this is about being inspired, about moving forward, about having those big aha moments. Now, because we are in eclipse season in Mercury retrograde, you know, this is the season of the plot twist. So there are going to be some opportunities and some realizations that come along, either within you personally and or around you in your environment that align you to realizations and potentials that <laughs> were not there previously. It's like, whoo, really? I didn't see that coming. I didn't see that coming is kind of the tagline of this season, but I feel like you're in a beautiful position here coming through as the Ace of Wands to really take those opportunities and be ready for them, right? Because you can have all the opportunities in the world, but if you're not ready, then it's it's going to, you know, cycle through and go along to, to someone who's aligned with it from a place of readiness. But I feel like this Ace of Wands is saying like you're quite ready, right? It's beautiful. It's like that rooster was, was waiting and ready even in the nighttime. Was, was it? wasn't lying asleep, wasn't off having us. No, it was ready for the dawn. Like this, ready for the dawn. So it's really beautiful. If you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready, as Ruth says, right? Now, in your place of challenge, you have the world key, major arcana. Fascinating. <laughs> Fascinating this is coming through as your challenge. So traditionally, the world is about a successful and happy and joyful completion of a given cycle, right? Now, I, I would just want to call to your intention here. This represents all of the fixed signs, right? We got Aquarius, right? We got Scorpio, we got Leo, we got Taurus. It's all of these fixed sign energy here. So the fact that this is coming up in your place of challenge says to me that there might be some challenges around changes that want to happen in your environment, right? Now, could this be something within you? Something internal that you're like, I know I need to change this. I know this isn't working for me anymore, but it is familiar. Are we going to choose the familiar 
over the unknown, even if the familiar, we've outgrown it in some way. Or this could be, you know, something around you that wants to change. This could be something that happens within your physical circumstances that is going to require some sort of, you know, significant transition or shift for you. Whether it's walking away from something or choosing something new, saying yes to something that scares you or making a hard decision. But the fact that this is coming up in your place of challenge, I love that this is the world and not the Ten of Swords. Because the fact that this is the world, and it's a major arcana says that there is a lot of happy potential on the other side of allowing something to end that wants to end. Beautiful. So in your place of victory, we have seven of swords. Now let's talk. The number of times that the seven of swords at this this schmo has come up in this round of readings is next level. There's always like a, a star, you know, like a card that comes up the most in every round. And it's for this one, it's seven of swords, which is perfect for eclipse season and Mercury in retrograde. You know, this is about things that have existed hidden in the dark, whether in our subconscious or unbeknownst to us, right? In our given circumstances, coming into the light of day, right? What is done in the dark will come to the light. That's what this is. But this is also the ways in which we act out of, you know, our best interests, the ways in which we allow our integrity to be challenged. It's the ways in which we say no to ourselves to say yes to someone or something else. The fact that this is coming up in your place of victory says that you are breaking some real karmic patterns and cycles within you where you have acted out of your own best interest, where you've made choices that might feel good or maybe just familiar in the moment, but that you know you're not necessarily going to feel good about later or that don't land as well or that you look back and go, wow, I, I made a choice uh, in the moment that part of me knew, even though it seemed easier, it was really a difficult one when I look back because now I don't feel as great about it. Now I wish I had chosen differently. The fact that this is in your place of victories, it, it really says to me that you're going to be waltzing through this period uh, from a very conscious and ready place where you're willing to release what wants to be released. And doing so, break some patterns and manifesting new things for yourself. It's stunning. I feel like a lot of this has to do with your mind. I really, really do. That swords rule the realm of the mind. It's about how you see things, how you think, what you expect for yourself, manifesting your own reality with your thoughts. That feels like the name of the game for you, Gemini. Now, your advice here is four of cups. Now, on a personal note, this comes up for me a lot personally. So it's, it's this is just a, a real part of the human experience here is, is, you know, being advised to, you know, channel this four of cups energy that comes up for everybody in a more positive way. Now, traditionally, this is about a certain dissatisfaction with the way things are. This is not going with the flow, right? Look at this. There's that uh, starfish there, which is Gemini energy, by the way. Can you see that in the mermaid's hair? There is this stunning mermaid by a waterfall waterfall here and then a, like another little mini waterfall here and a beautiful environment trying to be magical and he can't even see it because he's so focused on what he wished wishes were different right so it's about not seeing the gift in your situation not seeing the opportunity in something that is presenting as undesirable right if he were to just it's it's similar to five of cups but it's but it's a more in my experience, it's a little bit more difficult to shift this than Five of Cups. Because Five of Cups is about perspective. But this is more, for me, it's more deeply emotional in nature and speaks to a certain sadness uh, that keeps us from remembering our own resourcefulness and the fact that, you know, sometimes the most beautiful gifts come in the guise of something that is, you know, unwanted or unforeseen. So, this is your advice. See the gifts and everything as much as you possibly can, right? Notice the mermaids when they arise, <laughs> as they arrive, right? So in your place of outcome, you've got five of swords. Again, I really feel like we're, we're talking about your head here, Gemini. You know, five of swords is very much about it's it's similar to Seven of Swords, but it really has to do with environments that we exist in that maybe aren't so good for our mental health. And also understanding that the people, that the five people, if you've ever heard this, the five people you spend the most time with, like that's who you are. Like, because you're, you're taking in other people's energy, the environments that you exist in affect you and they mold you. It's just like when you're in a relationship with someone, you take on a lot of each other's uh, word choice and attributes and it's, it's being human. We, we adapt 
to those that we spend a lot of time with. So I, I feel like the fact that this is coming is your outcome, is you're really coming out of this time, really taking some stock of who and how you spend your time and the ways in which it fuels you, invigorates you, contributes to your Ace of Wands realness, or the ways it makes you feel a little bit, hmm, Four of Cups, Seven of Swords, maybe not so great, right? You know, the fact that there's Three of Swords here and then two on the ground is really calling to me. The Three of Swords representing, you know, a heartbreak, sadness, loss, you know, hurting from the past. And then the Two of Swords here represents calm, inner peace, objectivity, taking your heart and your head and sitting with them in, for equal conference, right? And really achieving that place of clarity by incorporating both your head and your emotional core. It's beautiful. It's kind of like that part in all the movies where it's kind of like Neo and Matrix when he finally gets the memo that like he is the one and he's able to like, it's not about, you know, like dodging the bullets. He's able to just like stop them in their tracks. It's very much two of swords for me. And I feel like for you, the fact that this is coming in in your place of outcome is you're choosing a life of the two of swords over the three of swords. And again, this can be about your personal consciousness and or something about your environment or your workplace or your relationships what what leads you to more of a two of swords feeling as opposed to a three of swords? And how much of this comes down to your choices and what you attract? Because you do attract and manifest your reality, right? What you believe, right? Now, your oracle here is, I got to tell you, I, I love this oracle, but I hate this oracle as well because I'm not the most patient person. As a Gemini, you may be able to relate to this, <laughs> but this is Sisters of the Seasons. It's really good medicine, though. Sisters of the Seasons is cycles of growth, natural law, divine order. This is everything in its time. Everything happens exactly when it's meant to that the best thing that we can do in terms of, you know, moving through this time period of eclipse season and Mercury and retrograde is trusting that the cliffhangers, the, you know, surprise twists, the, the, you know, all of those moments of like, what? I didn't see that coming. I keep hearing that for you. I didn't see that coming. Just trusting that all of that is happening and orchestrated in a way that though you may not be able to see backstage at the moment, you know that it's a temporary phase. You can just stay ready through and use that time to your best advantage. You can four of cups that bish. You know what I mean? You can choose how you work with this time because it's, it is going to be, you know, full of a, a lot of unexpected energies. Just that's what we're dealing with, you know, um, in terms of the the astrology of it all, what can we do, right? It's the planets are spinning backwards, eclipses are happening, and it's a time where we can go, I'm going to choose to use this to my advantage and trust that when things are delayed or when they're not moving at a pace or in a way with which I would prefer, I can trust that I'm going to look back on this time and be really grateful that things happened exactly as they did. And I can choose to focus on the mermaid and not the fact that there's more or less cups than I would desire. And that's that's truly, that's truly like really good advice for all of us, especially during this time. So there's also a really positive connotation to this as well that says, you know, patience leads to, you know, a lot to be grateful for and celebrate. So all that's yours is on the way, all in, all in season and timing that you can feel more keenly is coming if you choose to step outside of the realm of the, you know, restricted mind and really sit into, the, you know, your feeling base, your strength base, go within your stingray self and really get in tune with your aligned self and, and make the most of, of what you had to work with. That really is the key for this time. So really beautiful, Gemini, that being said. And thank you so much for being here. I so hope that this helps and resonates. If so, let me know in the comments below. I, I love you guys so much. I, I love hearing from you in the comments. Um, let me know what's going on. I'm so happy to be back with you guys after some time away. I am currently filming from an undisclosed location somewhere in the States. <laughs> I'm in a hotel. <laughs> so thank you for your patience as I'm going through a transition of my own and, and seek to be with you guys in a more regular way. I'm, I'm waiting on a visa approval right now so that I can get back home to the UK. <laughs> so yes, thank you. Thank you guys so much for going with me on this journey. And with that being said, most of all and always, just thank you for being you <laughs> and be well. Until next time.